Okay, cool. We're back. So just to just to close that that argument about color up, um, and there's there's no there's no real philosophy nowadays. You know, um, you can choose. You know, and and depending on who you have as a teacher, and if you are sensitive to what they are teaching, what he or she is teaching, then you can choose. You know, you can pick and choose uh, whatever you feel is is closer to your sensitivity. Um, but there's nothing like manifestos today. Uh, there, there's there's nothing quite like what it was, you know, a hundred years ago. So, so we can. Um, I guess there's the cool thing is that we can all speak about these things from a very very subjective standpoint. The uh, the bad thing is that you know we start. We start confusing ourselves a little bit because uh, we are defining, each of us is sort of defining what we feel valuable uh, about color, you know, is. So that's why I always try to be very, very sort of subjective, uh, objective about uh, certain things. And especially, if, for example, color, um, you know, we, we speak about the three sort of determining qualities of color and um, and those are going to be the same you know regardless of what you believe so uh, we speak about value temperature and hue and you can define any color with those three qualities any any color so um, hue I mean, uh, saturation I meant instead of hue so so for an hour, that was pretty good. Um, I like these videos because they, they, um, they, you know, because they cut, they automatically cut themselves when you know they stop when you've been working for an hour, and it gives you an idea of what you are supposed to be getting to in an hour. So. Um, so I'm I'm kind of happy with with how it's coming out. So and it's good it's good work for an hour's worth of work. Even even if it's um I mean it's a small small it's a small portrait but uh it's it's cool for for the time we have. So let me let me go to that ear. Try to make that ear really interesting. Okay. Cool. See how I'm, you know, I could push my paint a lot more than what I'm doing right now. By push it, I mean like I could drag it over the surface and that way I, d I wouldn't have to go to my palette so much. But when I push myself to constantly go back to my palette, I'm, I'm also making myself understand that um, the decisions that I'm trying to, to put down with color are very, very particular. They're very, very specific to, to, um, to a certain area of the painting, which means that they obey um, very specific relationships with the colors that are surrounding, that are surrounding it. So... Um, so by going back to my palette constantly, it's annoying because, you know, you have to charge up your brush every single time. Um, but you're thinking about something. You're not just painting um, blindly. You're not just moving your brush around. You are, you are thinking constantly of what was it that you wanted to solve what prompted you to go to your palette? You know, what are you trying to solve? How you're, you know, what colors you're mixing so that you can try, attempt to solve it? And then as soon as you put it down, how well did you execute it? You know, did it work? Did it make, the, you know, did it have an effect on the uh, whole of the painting? And um, I always try to do that. 
Because in theory, every single decision we make has to do something. It has to say something. Uh, or else, why did we take it? If it was a decision and we deemed it important for our painting, why did we make it? You know, uh, if, if you feel like you're making an important decision and you put it down and nothing happens to your painting, then there's probably something off, something wrong with that. So, um, so I try to sort of exalt that the idea that um, that all those decisions are are really really important by just constantly going back and forth to my palette. Uh, there's a pattern in his scarf, which is really nice, but ugh. I mean, I don't know if I want to do it. We'll see. I need to sort of block it in here, though. It's kind of a cooler a little bit, so I'm using that. When I, when I feel something's a little more neutral... That's when I go to my um, my raw umber. It's like a beautifully uh, natural neutral. Okay. Some people don't like it because it feels it's very fragile because it dries very brittle. Some some of it, but uh, I like it. I assume this is oil. Yes, 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 it is. Yeah, I have to do one of those. I'm not really good at it, and I struggle a lot, but I'll, I have to do one of those uh, gouache ones uh, from life because a lot of people have been asking me to do one of those. Um, and again, I have no issues with, work, with doing one of those, but um, I do struggle because it doesn't come naturally. So, Nicholas, have you ever tried to recreate painting from your childhood? I mean, the ones that you did as a child? <laughs> well, I I know exactly how I. Well, I didn't paint as a child, but I remember the uh, drawings I would do as a child, and I remember the ones that I would do, I did in kindergarten. So, um, I could I could very much so do those. I could recreate those with no issue. I feel, and the reason I'm being so sort of um, sure about this. It's because I only drew like Hulk and Spider-Man. Those were my go-to um, things that I would draw constantly. <laughs> so um, those are kind of easy to recreate. <laughs> and I, would, I remember I, it's, my Spider-Man would just be like, um, you know, like red. Just, and I, would, I, would, I remember in marker, just making them in marker in my... Uh, in, at um, kindergarten, and uh, and I would um, so I would I would just use all the red, and then I would make a grid for his face. So like it, it was ridiculous, but it it looked incredible to me at that time. So so it was red, a grid, and probably some eyes. I'm not sure about the eyes. I don't think I remember those. What I did for the eyes. But yeah, uh, superheroes. I was always in love with those things. And that's why I obviously saw uh, Avengers. But I'm not going to say, I'm not going to spoil it for anyone, so don't worry about it. No worries. I'm not going to spoil anything. I want to see those drawings. <laughs> no, I, I wish I could have them. No, no, no. I think those, those um, like I keep the drawings my uh, children do. I have like this big, uh, portfolio with their drawings um, and the most interesting ones are when they are like from up until like four maybe years old um, and then afterwards they become a little too self-aware of what they're drawing so it's a shame um, they I mean they as it, as it as if it was my kids but th these are like children not my kids but just children in general they start becoming, like they socialize their work and they start becoming 
uh, more more aware of what they're doing. Like if like let's say if they're doing a lion, if a lion looks like a lion, as opposed to the one that they're doing because they want to just fucking do a lion and they just make it up. Um, so it's nicer when when nobody is telling you you know what to do. It, it was just, it's a lot nicer those drawings, or where you don't really care if the uh, lion you just made looks or feels like a lion. So, so this is uh, this is good. I feel cool about this. Um, and now I have to kind of de start developing little areas of the painting. Let me let me just put like a couple of little strokes here and there. Uh, because this is nice, and I feel a lot, a lot of people have no issues in getting sort of here when you do like a nice blocking. Um, but then when you have to develop it, um, it gets a little bit harder. So, so that's, that's good. That's a little bit lighter, but I don't care about that. Uh, let, me, let me do the, uh, just the tip of the hat maybe a little bit, and we can... We can uh, go for the uh, develop and we can develop the uh, face a little bit more. Do a Spider Man, please. I should. I should do a Spider Man. Or a Hulk. Yeah. Hulk is awesome. He's my favorite. He's. I've loved him since I was a kid. Just like dumb superhuman strength. That's perfect. That's just perfect. Uh, so this is cooler. I really like that color right there. Uh, why did you choose the red background? Um, the chairs and the bus. I, I could lie. I could bullshit this so much. But uh, no. The chairs and the bus here in Bogota. Uh, well, it depends what uh, sort of buses you take. But... They are red. Uh, so it's not surrounded. The red is not really surrounding him, but I really liked it. So I, I pushed it and I kind of uh, made it go like all around. Uh, I just feel it's just like a great, great, great color to frame that, uh, that face. So that light coming from left to right feels a lot stronger from the one that's kind of filling from right to left. And I can kind of see it in the bill of the hat because, you know, that light goes up to there and then this is very, very subtle. There's a very subtle light there. Nothing like too big. So that's good. Good. Okay, that stroke just didn't work. Those are the hardest strokes, the ones that you have to, there's, there's a softness to them and you still want to use that bristle brush, but blech. Sometimes it's a, and I'm really heavy-handed, so, you know, those are those are tough for me. Uh, so this is the reason I don't use solvent is because I wipe my brush. This is what my rag kind of looks like. You know, all the times that I've been kind of uh, cleaning my brush. So you can use. A few brushes, but you have to be cleaning them uh, constantly. Ever tried walnut oil as a medium? Just walnut oil? I mean, no, no solvent, just walnut oil? I've, I don't think I've ever used just solely um, oil as a medium. Um, it, honestly, it, it wouldn't work. Um, maybe for, for uh, Ala Prima painting, maybe. But if you're developing a painting in layers, it's, it would be impossible. Oil is like impossible to manage, just straight oil. 
And and reason is like super simple because it has, it's a wonderful vehicle for your paint, but it's horrible in terms of adherence. So when you try to put oil on top of a painting that already has oil, oof, it beads up like crazy. So so no, I, I I've used uh, in in terms of traditional mediums, I've used um, uh, stand. Or sun thickened, I, but I mean I used cold pressed and I, I I did use a bunch of them also, but and I used uh, how do you say that one the the one that dries like it stays open for so long. Um, I I know it in Spanish, but I don't remember. If, uh, I I what's it called in English? Ugh, the one that Skip Lipke uses. You know, it, it's a it's a super super. Uh, it dries really slow. I mean, they're all drying oils. You have to use drying oils, but uh, this one you, uh, dries super slow. Please tell us your favorite painter. Um, I don't know, uh, Rembrandt maybe. Yeah, probably. I always go back to him, and he always surprises me. So yeah, I mean, I have a bunch of contemporary painters that I really like, but if I if I think about Rembrandt, he's like, he's, he's better than everyone. Yeah. Uh, poppy seed? Is it poppy seed? Maybe. Adormidera. Aceite adormidera. Es que no me acuerdo. No me acuerdo como es que se dice. Gamvar or uh, liquin. Yeah, I've used... I've used um, I've used plenty of of uh, alkyd mediums. Yes, that I've used a lot. Um, I mean, they're still very irritant, and you know, sometimes, like in in Chattanooga, that I was doing the uh, workshop, I took um, Lafranc medium, uh, alkyd medium, with me, and I thought, you know, first painting we did, I used no medium at all. And just to show people how I kind of worked with no medium. And then the next painting, I, I was like, oh, I, you know, I should, I should give it a shot. I should try and use, um, I should try and use some, some, uh, some, some alkyd medium. Uh, oh my God. And it stunk the whole place up. It was so, I was so embarrassed. Like I was like, no, so for now we're going to use some medium. It's all cool. And oh fuck, it was it smelled so bad. I mean, they had to crack open the door. And this was a large large space. And it just smelled really really bad. Not bad, but it just it was there like and and a lot of people today are very very conscious of of the stuff they use. And some people were like, I mean, I know they were being like really respectful, so they didn't say anything to me, but I could tell they were like, oh my God, what is he using? So, so no, so we're not using, and for my workshops, no, forget it, just paint, straight paint, it's totally fine, I'm not using medium anymore, so. The model comes from a photograph, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, we would have done a lot of rest. <laughs> we would have had to, you know, make him rest many, many poses ago. So, uh, let me see. Let me see. Like, I want to shape this eye, but I don't want to start just thinking of an eye as a you know, I don't want to describe, overly describe the eye. So I have to be super careful with what I do. Can you explain the refinements you're making right now? Already looks done to me. Yeah, you could, I mean, you could stop whenever you want. But, um, uh, yeah, I, I think that people are usually, one of the toughest things to do in painting is is to, learn how to develop something. And I always tell people, like, that doesn't come from just being patient. 
Because if, if all it took, like, if you wanted to, let's say you can block in a pair of hands and you can do that really, really nicely. But, you know, eventually there's something in you that says, ah, but I want to get into those kind of really specifics about a hand. Because let's say that you, you loved and you wanted to paint something because you saw, you know, you saw your girlfriend hands uh, uh, and... And you were like, oh, I need to, I really, really need to paint these hands. So there's a specific quality to them that you want to get to. And, um, and but you've never done it. You, all you've done is like done s kind of simple block-ins. And you want to push yourself to see if you can take it further. Um, I always tell people that's not going to come the first time. Not at all. Like not even close. Um, those things happen with time and with consistency. And by, by w what I mean uh, with that is that you have to kind of push yourself to do, let's say if you're doing blockings, if you do like a really nice blocking of a hand, you have to do that a hundred times. And you have to do it really, really well a hundred times. And only after that a hundredth time, and I'm not, I'm just saying a hundred, but by a hundred I mean like a long, like, many, many times. And by doing it, you know, consistently, you're going to eventually realize that you can suddenly push a little bit further, that you can go a tiny bit further afterwards. Oil of cloves. There you go. Thank you, Anna. Anna Hovey. Yeah, oil of cloves. Thank you. Thank you. That's perfect. Um, so, so, I always tell people, don't, don't think it's about just stopping and you know, saying, okay, I'm going to spend a month in these hands. Because if your ability is not there, it doesn't matter if you spend a month. You know? If it's not there, it's not there. It's not going to come from will, you know, just willing it to existence. Um, it's going to come from, consist from consistency. So I, I know that that's, you know, many times people don't want to hear that. But that is the truth. That is the entire truth. Um, if you want to get better at something, you just have to do that many, 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 many times. That's how it works. You know, there's, there's no other way about it. So, and there's no way around it. So just go to the... Uh, always push to the limit of your ability. Always, always. And eventually you'll see that you, you, you have a breakthrough. But again, it comes from consistency. It doesn't come from will, from just, um, just saying, okay, today I'm going to push myself to do this. Nope, it doesn't work that way. Again, it's like an exercise. You know, you can't lift more than you can lift. You have to work out and, and eventually you're going to have the strength to like, you know, lift whatever it is or get closer to whatever you want it to lift. Um, I don't lift anything. I lift like a salt, you know, shaker. So that is a terrible example for me. Uh, but, um, you know, for people that exercise, you can relate, I think. Um, so, so uh, again, just to reiterate, consistency. You know, do it again and again and again and again and again. Uh, that's the only way. And push yourself. Don't get comfortable. Don't ever get comfortable. You know, if you, if you realize that you've been painting like models with the same skin tone, have somebody that's different over. You know, if they were all like African American, have... You know, an Asian American over. If you and I'm not being racist. Hopefully, don't don't please don't like um, uh, interpret this the wrong way. What I'm saying is like just just really really push yourself to so that you, for example, you don't understand skin tone uh, the same way, or that you don't have a set palette for skin tone, which is really ridiculous. Um, just. Uh, be uncomfortable all the time, all the time. If you realize that you were painting indoors a lot and you notice it, go outdoors and, and, and try and paint a, a landscape. If you've painted a lot from life, 
that's fine. Try to do something from a photograph. That's totally fine. It's not a sin. So if you've painted a lot from photographs, try to work from life. Uh, if you paint a lot of figures, if you paint a lot of women, uh, try to paint men. If you, if you paint a lot of like um, traditionally beautiful women, you know, paint somebody that attracts you for a different reason. That, that is the most important thing I could say. Like, don't ever, don't ever, ever be still. Don't, like, keep, keep moving, keep, like, questioning, keep sort of arguing with yourself. Even if it means that you encounter all these things that you're not good at, you know, that you have to face, like, a lot of the weaknesses that you can have in your work. Um, those are very painful. Those... People always fall back onto things to feel safe. Um, but, um, and that's why they avoid things that are different and difficult to them. Don't ever do that. Just push yourself constantly. If you paint during the you know, day scenes, paint at night. It could be very simple. Like the, um, the act in itself can be super, super easy. Um, I have to do this little... Thing here, so I have to concentrate. How do you find models being an amateur? Well, do you have friends? And 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 I don't mean it by you can you can tell me like no, not really. I don't like people, but chances are like if you want to paint people, you probably know people. If you're attracted to people, you know you you probably already know all the models that you need. Um, maybe you have a fam. Maybe you have family with you. Maybe, hopefully, uh, maybe you have a boyfriend, girlfriend. Um, uh, maybe you're by yourself, but you have good friends. Maybe a roommate. Uh, and, and if that doesn't work out, maybe you could go to a coffee shop and maybe paint there for a little bit, without being weird. You know, kind of paint like the way James Gurney paints people which he, he's like so open about it that you know it's like incredible it's just like awesome just saying oh dude it's like oh that dude is like painting us right now and people are like fine with it so those glasses are like slowly appearing and that's kind of what I wanted to do I don't want to sort of draw them out um, I want to very slowly uh, start hinting at them and, and have them sort of come from all the, uh, all the little colors that I'm painting right next to them. So, Ugh. But it's difficult. That's why I have to concentrate on these little moments. Because it, it has to be really precise. There's nothing, there's nothing as annoying as trying to get a brush stroke right and you get it wrong and you have to sort of readjust almost not everything that you've done but just um, it's a little bit easier just to do it once and then not have to worry about it again than just having your hand just you know be really sort of uh, get ahead of, of, of itself and then lay in a brush stroke that is not exactly what you wanted, and now you have to deal with that brush stroke and say, oh, fuck, how do I fix this? So people usually love to be painted. Yeah, I mean, pe people like to be painted. People hate to pose. That I can tell you. I mean, if you, have some, if you find somebody that loves to pose for you, oh, fuck, marry that person, because that's annoying. That's annoying as hell. Um, I don't even like to do it. Uh, uh, like, I'm totally aware of how painful it can be posing from life. So, yeah. So marry the person that is willing to pose for you. That is, <laughs> that is the perfect, uh, that is the perfect advice. Um, uh, let's see. So it's getting better. It's getting a little bit better. I love to pose. Oh, there you go. So, Mary, everyone, just uh, Camila Ogerman, 
she is looking for somebody, uh, clearly, clearly, so um, you can marry her. Um, anyone, anyone, anyone. Just, I think she accepts DMs, so just like constantly DM her, please. Send, send her pictures, you know, nothing nasty, like nothing, don't be creepy. But please send her a ton of pictures. People that are interested in marrying her, just please send her a ton of pictures. Again, nothing weird. She, she'll block you. She'll, you know. Um, but uh, yes, just a lot of, hopefully a lot of suit, suitors out there. And hopefully a ton of pictures, please. Uh, and then Camila can send me um, the uh, best man. You know, or a woman, I don't know. And, uh, and I can make a painting of, uh, of that person. So I'm totally committed to this. That is going to be my show. I just, <laughs> that is my show. I, now, I, I didn't have a clue what I wanted to do for my show in October. Now I know. And it's going to be called um, uh, Camila. Just Camila. Yeah, simple, straight, you know. Um, so, please, everyone, no husband, please. What do you mean, no husbands, please? You don't want to, what are you talking about? I thought we had, you know, I thought everything was like super clear. I was saying, oh, you should marry the person who likes to pose. And you should totally be into that person that likes to pose. And nobody told you, like, you were the one who's like, I pose, I love to pose. You know, that means... I want to get married. That instantly means I want to get married. In the context of the conversation we were having, like, I'm sorry, but... <laughs> ¡Qué horror! <laughs> además, si no, además, si no me frenan, Camila, si no me frenan, yo sigo. Yo sigo... Eh, mi problema es que siempre sigo. Siempre... Si, no, no sé cuándo parar. Entonces... <laughs> <laughs> Solo me, sin casarme, por favor. Camila no está lista para casarse. Bueno, por favor, respeten, respeten. Falta de respeto, Dios mío. <ríe> Qué pena, Camila. Por favor, Camila, me cuentas si después te inundan eh, tu, tu, tu coso. O sea, si te tienes que cambiar de, de usuario, si tienes que cambiar, si tienes que ir del país, me avisas, por favor. <laughs> bueno, okay, back to painting. Back to painting. Yeah, I think she found somebody. So, yeah. She she wasn't very picky, so uh apparently all it took was like the first person to show her pictures. So, I think she's done. Yeah, who knew? It was that quick, that easy. Um so <laughs> So let's go back to this. Uh, so I'm kind of floating uh, around the painting, and uh, and I I want to see if I can develop little areas of the painting without, again, without without sort of ruining um, that nice blocking that I got from from the from laying color against color. Because I, I, I did like it. I, I usually really like the way my blocking sort of come out. Like the first, um, let's say in this one, like the, that first hour of the painting, I sometimes I'm very, very attracted to that first hour. Um, it's hard to, to keep, to sort of keep that painting going with the same energy that you have in that, in that first moment, so I'm always very aware of it, and sometimes, like, uh, with one painting that I, I don't know if you guys remember, the one of the um, uh, girl with the green background, uh, the one of Helen, um, you know, I stopped, because I, I really wanted to keep that, that experience of that, of, of painting that really quickly, um, uh, I, I wanted to hold on to that, so, uh, at times, it doesn't mean that I have to do that all the time. At times, there's very, like, 
little specifics that I want to get to. I mean, without, without making the painting precious. That, that's, my, that's been my approach with these um, paintings in the sketchbook. It's just about being uh, sort of bold and answering to that, uh, that call that we sometimes have. Um, and the whole point of, of this being a, a place, I was going to say a sketchbook, but it's not tr really a sketchbook. It's a place where I give myself the chance to do it. And the whole reason of me wanting to, to uh, print this as a book um, is because I feel that that's super, super, super important that we have a place like that. It, I mean, and, and I've said it time and again, but it, it bears repeating. Like, it doesn't mean that you have to buy this particular sketchbook. I don't care about this sketchbook. I mean, if, if, uh, if in Bogota, because that's how it works here. Like, if suddenly you wouldn't be able to find, like, and again, I could order from Amazon, but let's say, like, if I wouldn't be able to find this sketchbook again, like I would just use another paper, and if if it wasn't paper, then I would cut little bits of uh, of um, of cotton or linen or whatever I have lying around there, and I would use those because it's not it again. It's not about um, it's not about the uh, paper. It's about the space and the mindset. That's that's what it's it's interesting, and I I feel that. Those two things are the ones that we should never we should never be willing to to um, to negotiate. Just having a space like this where we can just uh, work, you know, where we can just work for ourselves, paint for ourselves, understand, you know, the stuff that attracts us. Um, those are non-negotiable. I would tell people like that's that's something that's precious to you. It doesn't mean the paintings have to be precious. It doesn't mean that they have to come out beautiful. It doesn't mean that you have to spend weeks on them. No. Like, for me, it's worked, like, spending just a couple of hours uh, a day on them. And that's worked perfectly fine. But it's not about the outcome. Again, it's about the, the, uh, the mindset and allowing yourself those moments. That is... That is precious. That is valuable. That has, you know, you you can't put, um, you can't put value to that. Um, that is priceless. Uh, so find find the, the find the space that works for you. That's I've I've been wanting to um, to sort of push people to to just find a, find what this means for me. And with this, how this has been so, so helpful to me, I've been wanting to push people to find it in their own, within their own sort of practice. It doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be the same. I'm not here um, trying to, um, to sell you anything. I just, I just think that, um, you know, you can, it is, it is great company for the, you know, the rest of your work. I don't know what, you know, your other paintings will look like. I don't know what, you know, what your professional work or what galleries are expecting to see when you work or, or you know, portrait work you may do or your landscape work. I don't know. It doesn't, it, in a way, it doesn't matter. Those things kind of don't matter. Um, what matters is that you have a, a place and a moment for yourself where you can be sort of unapologetic and you can do things just because they attract you. So I think that that's probably the most important part. Uh, let's see. So slowly, it's not one thing. It's not like we have developed like an eye. So... With skin tones, how do you handle them going cooler? Sometimes it goes purple or sometimes green. Is there a way to think about them to have organization in painting? Yeah, but again, um, I think it's totally fine if they go, you know, purple or green. I would I would ask you to just understand them as more purple than and or greener than, uh, instead of just saying purple or green. 
I know it's just, it, it may seem just uh, semantics, but trust me, it makes a, a huge difference if you just um, refer to them as, as something that's relative. Uh, I, I find that that's the first and probably the most important step in, in getting better at color. It's, it's not just saying purple or green. That doesn't mean anything. I, I, know, I know, and I'm not being hard on you, but, um, but that, that very rarely gives you an idea of what you're talking about. If you say purple, we are, we're all imagining just different, you know, purples. We're, I'm positive we, we are not imagining the uh, color that you're saying. And, like, and if you're talking about skin tones, like I've seen purple like mid-tones in very pale like white women. Um, and I've seen purples, very saturated purples, in you know people of African descent, so you know it, it it means in my mind that they're so like those two colors, or those two moments that evoked those colors, are so different that I I wouldn't know how to say well you have to you know it, you have to do this because they are different conditions they are you know they they belong to the way. Uh, specific lighting conditions um, um, have you perceive form uh, differently depending on who the model is and what you know time of day it is, what you know temperature of light you're using. It's so so different. So yeah, uh, I've I've heard, but if I understand your question correctly, and 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 bear with me here. I, I think what you're referring to is like, you know, I still want to acknowledge those changes in temperature, but I don't want it to look like, and I've heard people refer to um, like uh, this, this sort of painting where people are a little more uh, expressive with their color as clownish, clownish. That's, that's almost like a despect, like, pejorative way to uh, refer to um, to certain colors that you would use um, while painting people, but that feel off because they are either too saturated or too um, or just uh, hues that they don't seem to belong um, in 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 the color scheme of of whatever it means to just paint people um, if that's the case, then I would say, uh, I don't know. I mean, I've, I've heard that regarding my own work. It's like, well, that looks a little clownish. That's a little, and boof, I don't, you know, I, I take that with like a grain of salt because um, one of my favorite paintings is that green stripe that Matisse did, the portrait of, that's called like the green stripe, the portrait of his wife. That it has this green. In my case, where the two lights meet, it's very warm and dark. In in Matisse's painting, uh, it was a green. It was a very very sort of saturated green. There's no you know, there's no other way around it. And um, I love that painting. I absolutely love that painting. So, you know, I I can't understand the argument of, of a color feeling clownish. It just doesn't really make sense to me. So, um, If I see a green, what I do, like in, in the sense that you're describing it, like you're saying a green or a purple, um, and just to, just to finish this. Um, again, I would try not never to think of them as green or purple. Again, I would say greener than or more purple than you know whatever else I was I was trying to um, to uh, I was basing my judgment on, um, but if I see it, you know sometimes it's like wow that green or that purple looks so amazing, and my question is always to like students is like well you're clearly moved by it how how amazing is it to you, and and maybe it's like. I can't stop looking at it. It just feels like an emerald green. It feels incredible. And I was like, well, if you feel super strongly about it, then paint it. You know, 
tell people that you felt strongly about that color that you're perceiving. Because, you know, chances are people don't get to see those colors the way you do. So the only way you're going to be able to convey how much that color moved you is by really painting it. By really, really painting it. So now how much do you want to push it? That's totally up to you. You know, if you're uh, mildly uh, taken by that color, then, you know, you probably control it. If you're aware of it, but you feel that it's, it's sort of a trap and you feel that your painting has to be about the control you have within your palette and the way you understand or interpret skin tones, whatever that means, I don't, I'm not sure what that means, but then that's totally cool, you know. You are the one that has to understand how you define, you know, your, um, your sort of philosophy when you, when you see, how you, understand, um, how you understand the things that you perceive and how then you eventually um, interpret them uh, through painting. So... But that's a very exciting journey because that journey is very different for all of us. So don't be, don't be scared of that. Ugh, these glasses, fuck me. Okay, that looks... There, there's a kid screaming at the outside. Perfect. I hope that answered. I hope it was a long, it's a long answer. But um, sometimes, sometimes it's just, um, it's just harder to give simpler answers to things that are a little more complicated. That little highlight wasn't as big. I have to be careful with that one. And then there's a little one here, which is kind of cool. That's cool. Okay. That's good. Um, let me see. How can I make that up? Because I have to make stuff up because that red isn't going all... Like, for example, in the back of his, of his glasses, there was... Uh, it's a different color altogether, so maybe if I do that, I can get a little bit of that distortion of the uh, lenses. Just a little bit here. Okay, cool. So that's good. It's looking okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um, certain areas that I want to get to but see I, I had to go when I wanted to I blocked in my my I, fuck I hate when I speak like Trump I, I start a sentence but I'm painting and I never finish it I never finish my thoughts that's terrible so when I started painting I I used when I started blocking in my light I used a um, bristle and now I'm using this tiny little, um, this tiny little uh, sort of Kalinsky brush, the sable brush, and and the reason is it's like it's the only way I can develop the painting further. I mean, I could do it boldly with a with a uh, bigger brush, but chances are that I'm going to lose a lot of the. Uh, a lot of the um, <clears throat> more subtle, more subtle um, things that I wanted to uh, to get to, so so I had to pull this one out, um, which is a, I mean they're very tempting, but they're also quite dangerous if if you don't if you're not concentrated you're gonna lose like your whole painting because because your tool is small. You start convincing yourself that you have to work tiny now, and it, you know as soon as you start working really small, 
um, the chances that you're going to miss the big th important things about the painting grow exponentially. So, so we have to be super careful about that. I'm realizing that because I distorted one side of the uh, lens because I, would, I wanted to push it, now both lenses look different. And, but ugh, I'm, I'm willing to sacrifice that uh, in order to, uh, to have that weird looking lens, like distortion on that lens. Okay. Maybe. Ugh. Little stuff, but I have to I have to get it just right. Okay, that's better. A little bit. Not great, but better. Okay. So, uno tiene más aumento que el otro, pero no le vamos a decir a nadie. <laughs> sí, no, pobre hombre. Debe ver debe sufrir resto. Pobrecito. <laughs> uh, so I, I still want to um, get to some areas of the painting that like in his face didn't really develop like his jaw didn't I blocked it in but I wasn't careful with the, my placement of that those brush strokes so this is a lot just that plane there is a lot better and then there's this one here, which is nice, and it goes a little lighter underneath. I love how I narrate my brush, but, but the thing is, if I narrate it, I know it, it sounds stupid. It, it feels like I'm, I'm talking about meerkats, or some, and I'm hidden like underneath a rock, and I'm like, the baby meerkat. Um, but if I narrate my brushstroke, um, I'm I'm probably more prone to like going for that in my palette uh, rather than just painting uh, without you know acknowledging that I'm painting you know I'm still painting but I'm painting for you guys so it's quite different. If I was painting by myself, oh I'm so unorganized. I mean. It's it's ridiculous how how much I jump through a painting. Like I'll do that constantly. I'll jump from area to area. So the good thing is that because you you guys are here, I push myself to be to have it make a little more sense, a little bit at least. So Okay. Um, this plane of his hat, cool, and we can get to this side also, uh, it's a little bit of that light coming through here also, cool. Good, good, good. Uh, now there's a lot of light. They're like really cool. Ugh, my white gets so dirty. Fuck. I've never had good practice with keeping my, my white clean. Because I stab at it. Like I don't drag it. If you drag the white towards your other colors um, you know then only the uh, bottom part where you drag gets a little dirty um, but that's totally fine but I I don't I just stab my whole white so it gets dirty very quickly uh, let's 
let's see. This is tiny little. Oh. This is what I meant by it getting dirt. It's gonna probably get dirty with that red. Shit. Okay, that's a little bit better. Not great, but better. And then I can do that. Tiny little blue. Okay, let's see. Right there. And right here. Ugh. Cool. I don't know what to do with this, with the uh, thing that he has in here. So it looks really cool, but uh, I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. Ordenadito. No, yo soy re desordenado. Pintando yo. Terrible. Eh, a ver. Let's try to do that. The, 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 the little thing. It's like a motorcycle thing on his cap. Like a patch. Uh, let's see. So... So I have to do the, uh, like, shadow. I don't want it to be perfect, because if it's too overly drawn, then it looks out of place with the rest of the painting. Um, okay. Um, so bike there, like a motorcycle, weird motorcycle. Um, not weird, just kind of ugly. Hermosa labor la que usted realiza con muchos artistas comparten su conocimiento. No, feliz. A mí me hace feliz esto. De verdad. Pienso que la educación en las artes es una cosa tan extraña que cuando tenemos cualquiera que sea como un conocimiento adquirido y unas experiencias, pienso que socializarlas por acá, por ejemplo, es algo muy, muy bello. Eh, pienso que combate todo eso, todo, todos los costos tan exagerados de la educación en el mundo cuando uno quiere estudiar arte eh, entonces lo hago honestamente con gusto con gusto puede no ser eh, la plataforma ideal digamos pero pero pues poco a poco so, saludos desde República Dominicana muchas gracias saludos también muy bonito yo he ido a Punta Cana, fue muy lindo. Él no tiene mucha pinta de motoquero. <risa> no, 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 le regalaron la gorra. Sí, sí, se la dieron. Debe ser como el sobrino. Se la regaló el sobrino. Esto acá. So that's good, good. Ok, that's a little bit better. Um, let's see, let's see, I'm almost done, I have to put the uh, shapes of those reds I said initially on the, uh, on his clothes, on his jacket, so I feel it's like super cool, um, let's see. There we go. Um, which I feel, I feel that they're awesome. Uh, so let me see if I can put them down. Uh, I mean, it's it's only the the purpose it's going to serve is just to integrate him with his with the background. That's 